Welcome to my presentation. It has been a little bit since I did one. I thought we'd go back strong and talk about the Warrior Cat series, which is something that I gave up on. I couldn't stand the Warrior Cat series anymore. I used to read it. Out of all the books, I read a complete total of one, two, three, four, four series. There are like six or seven now, but I read four. And it was around then that I gave up. So, um, it was crow feather. Like, if we were to take all the issues I had with the entire series and consolidate it into one sentence, it was crow feather. Every, every issue I have was mostly related to him. It's self-segregation, and there's, there's literally nothing more to it. You're just like, we choose to be separate. Um... And there was one scene when they were doing that whole giant journey to the new area and they had to like restart their clans. Like when they were traveling, they got close together and there was one cat, I don't remember who, like they were being cozy and comfy with a cat from a different clan and they stopped and they're like, sorry, I forgot things are different now. And I'm like, no, they're not. You're pretending they are, but they're not. Like nothing has changed. You, you just decided that it changed, but it didn't. And then there was the issue with Sky Clan, which is, you know, like that one chunky book that's not a series, but part of the series. And it's like, there was originally Sky Clan, and then the two legs, the humans come in and they start tearing down their home, and they're like, please help us, we're losing our home. And everybody was like, nah, you, that's your problem. So they leave, and the exact same thing happens to the other clans. They're like, oops, uh, we abandoned Sky Clan. And, you know, now Star Clan is abandoning us because we were jerks. And it's coming back to bite us in the you know what. And it just got me so angry. I'm like, okay, so you lack sympathy. You learn that having sympathy together makes things better and keeps you all alive. And you decide to go back on that sympathy because we're clans. It doesn't work out. It's like... Yeah, the entire point of this entire series, these six books, which was the first series I read, by the way, was getting along. And what did they do? They started fighting. For this series, um, a bunch of cats from all the clans were chosen by Star Clan. You know, their ancestors in the sky that watch over them. And they were like, uh, humans are coming in to tear down everything, so you have to make a huge journey to find a new place for them to live. And in this book, uh, they stopped by the mountains and they found a colony of mountain cats. And there was a death scene, which is important later. So, so they make a journey. And I think in like Dawn or Starlight, I think it was Dawn, uh, they arrive to a new place and they meet a badger, like a literal badger. And the badger's like, yes, I shall lead you to this new place. Home area to the mountains to... Um, they meet Badger, they go back home to spread the message, it doesn't go well. Everybody together travels to the new place, and then they're in the new place and they're trying to get set up there. Okay? That was the whole point. The whole point was to work together. And the beaver plot is them in this new area, their new land. You know, like, the lake was going dry and it was running out of water and people were like, what's going on? Where's all the water going? And then they see, well, it's coming from here. This stream isn't working. So they follow it. They go really far. They find out that a beaver dam had set it up. And again, it was four people, not four people, four cats, one from each clan. They all went together. They teamed up. They got friendly, yada, yada, yada. And then when they come back, they all just start hating each other. And it was seen as a good thing that they didn't get along. Like, the last series, you're like, yes, you need to team up because that is how you work better. But now it's like, actually, you guys being friends makes things worse, so you should stay apart. Annoying. So, one star. When they first got here, they were in, like, maybe, like, this area or this area. Um, the leader of Wind Clan died. And, like, right before his dying breath, he changed who was next in line to be leader. Which led to a civil war in Wind Clan. And... Once One Star became leader, he and Firestar were friends, okay? Like, they kind of grew up together in the last, um, where they used to live. So, One Star, as soon as he became the leader, he started treating Firestar like shit. And, like, ignoring him, and, like, Firestar tried to warn him about something that was happening in his territory, you know, to be nice. And the guy's like, we can handle ourselves. 
stop it. So, like, mm. Yeah, like, again, it just contradicts. Like, Blue Star had children with someone from another colony. I mean, yeah, another clan. The kids grew up. It didn't go well because, you know, they were depressed. Like, you lied about who my mother was. Like, yeah. And then there's also, like, Grey Stripe. He falls in love with a cat from another clan. Same clan as Blue Star, by the way. You know, like, they got a whole lovey-dovey thing going on. And, um, what happens, you ask? Like, what happens to... Yeah, he goes to live with River Clan. So he leaves his clan, joins another one, becomes friendly with them, and then goes back to the original clan, and the two clans remain friends because he had children there. Like, Wind Clan and Thunder Clan, they live right next to each other, and they're supposed to, like, keep fighting. Like, shouldn't you get along, or at least be kind to the person you're living next door to instead of constantly bitching at each other? You know, just a thought. And again, territory battles make zero sense. Like, this was mentioned very, very quickly in one book before I gave it up. It's like this whole clearing area, because you can see um, Shadow Clan like goes around it. Apparently, there was blood shed over this whole area, and it doesn't make sense, because Firestar at one point was like, there was no point, like it's a waste, we don't need it. But they get back. So did you want it? Was it a waste? Was it not? Why did you do this whole fight? Yeah, also, neither clan eats fish. They don't know how to fish. Like, I don't know why, but that's something that was mentioned several times. Like, the only clan that actually knows how to fish is River Clan. Everybody else, the water is just there for water. Like, they already share part of the lake. So, you know, I don't get it. And then there's medicine cats. Medicine cats are a conundrum. They were added in, in the beginning of the series, never thought through, and then the writers wrote themselves into a corner with them. Three, it's a good idea. You need someone in your clan who knows how to keep everybody healthy, how to make sure nobody dies. That's a good thing. But then they added in how they talk to Star Clan. And again, in Star Clan, there are no clans. They say this several times. It is just Star Clan. So what is the point in being divided when you are alive and fighting each other and killing each other over these topics just to go to Star Clan, see that same person and be like, hey, we're cool now. Like, you, I'm sorry I killed you, I'm sorry we fought over territory, I'm sorry we killed each other for food, but we're in the same clan now, uh, we're both dead, so we're Gucci. That's not how it works, that's awkward, that's weird. And it's like, medicine cats communicate with these cats, so they are getting the message that you are one clan in Star Clan, and they're supposed to go back to their clan and be like, yes, let's keep disagreeing with everybody. Like, medicine cats never talk about wars or issues because they're like I'm supposed to be here for peace I'm not supposed to do anything and it's like okay so do you want to get along and agree with Star Clan or do you just want to keep doing the same shit over and over again which just makes things worse and kills more cats you know and then there's the issue of medicine cats not being able to have kids like they're not monks they're cats <laughs> For most cats, they don't make that conscious choice. They're like, ooh, sex. But um, it also just doesn't make sense. Like, if it's a girl cat, it makes sense because, like, it's kind of hard for her to help other people if she's carrying around cats and is, you know, tired, maybe in labor, carry, caring for those kittens, you know, like, feeding them, teaching them. So, like, that makes sense. But boy medicine cats? Like, obviously, they're going to have to help out with the kids still, but... They're not connected to them or feeding them from their bodies, so I still just don't get it. Like, yes, you shall not love and give no reason for it. Like, I don't think a reason was ever given in the entire series I read. And I started reading the series where it's like, how the clans came to be. And like, they originally separated because they kept fighting. So they're like, we need to be apart so that we stop fighting. But then they kept fighting when they were apart, so like, there was no point. So it's just, like, at that point, it's not the system, it's just you. Yeah, I hate Star Clan. Mostly because of the one line when they were talking to the cats. And they're like, you don't ever think about it. You already gave up. Like, these kids haven't gone through a bunch of traumatic experiences and found out that their mom died. Well, no. Found out that they were lied to about who their parents were. Like, I don't know about you, but I think that's a pretty good reason to go, like, I don't really want a part of this instead of guilt tripping them and gaslighting them. So, fuck you, Star Clan. I don't think Firestar is the greatest hero, mostly because um, Brambleclaw had to lead four colonies of cats across 
land to a new home and then set up those new homes. Like, I get the leaders had a big role in that, but, like, hmm. I'm a bit biased. Uh, I will give him props for stopping Brambleclaw's dad. I think his name was Blackstar or something. I don't know. Give him props for that. I give him props for Scourge, you know. Um, but, you know, his grandkids. I feel like his grandkids accomplish more than him. Like, I get they were given powers, but also they killed literal gods. So. Back to Crowfeather. So when he is introduced, he's, like, snappy, rude, like, very loyal. Wind Clan, Wind Clan, Wind Clan. I'm loyal, I'm loyal, I'm loyal. But, um... As he got closer to Feathertail, like, his real personality started to show. And he's like, I just want to be happy. I want to have a simple life in my clan, and I want to be happy. And he wanted her to be a part of that life. And then she died right in front of him. And then to remember her death, he asked to have his name, to have her name. So instead of Crow Paw, because he was an apprentice, he asked to take Feather from her name. So he became Crow Feather. And I found that a huge testament to how much he cared for her, okay? And then, <laughs> Leaf Fool. Like, nothing against Leaf Fool. She was about to die. She was falling. And he saves her. And before this, they had been having, like, some tension. Like, mmm, feel a little awkward around you. Like, I believe they, like, brushed pelts. Ooh. And they, like, panicked. And, like, it was really fun to read. And then he, like, saves her and he confesses to her. It was really dramatic. It was moving. It was a beautiful scene. And he said he loved her. And then they're like, I love you so much. Let's run away. Let's leave the clans and start a family on our own. And then he doesn't. And then, like, there's a time skip. And it was like, okay, he hates the kids he made with the person he loved. And he had random kids with someone else because he's... Because his leader was like, I don't trust you. How do I know you're not going to run away and leave this clan abandoned again? What can you do to prove that? And he's like, I'm going to have sex with some cat and have kids. Again, at this point, I stopped reading. But um, I was doing some research for this presentation. And I'm like, I got to like, read up his character profile to find out what happened next. Around the Omen of Stars and Power of Three series, like somewhere in between there, the authors realized how much they fucked up Crowfeather, and that he was no longer a likable character, and that actually most of the characters were becoming fucking annoying. Uh, they're like, we gotta make him likable again. So they wrote a side story where it's about him forgiving the kid who tried to kill his other kid. Because that's a great way to make a character likable. I've read like half of it, Will I be able to muster up the courage to read the second half? I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. But, um, when I read the summary, it, it honestly pissed me off because it'd be like, yes, your child uh, was trained under demons for months, agreed to try and kill everybody, uh, tried to kill his own son, failed, and then had a pity party about it. So, because, um, in the story, you know, like, the third wife, the one he married out of obligation, uh, is missing, and he has to find her, and there's a bunch of, like, rat weasel things in the tunnels that are, like, attacking and killing people, and then it's like, oh, and I wish it could end there, but it's just like, wish it could end there, but it's like, this whole book about, there was this one scene, one star, fuck one star. I found out that the reason why One Star has a whole thing against marrying people outside of your clan is because he did it, and he abandoned his kids, and his kids came back to kill him, and they commit, like, dual suicide. Uh, but that's later. But before he's revealed to have that secret family, he's telling Crowfeather, like, you are at fault. And with you and Leafpool, that girl from the Thunder Clan, yeah, that was your fault. I still don't trust you. You're supposed to forgive your son even though he tried to kill everybody because I forgive him and because we're from the same clan. So suck it up. That was that was literally the talk he had. And um I felt so much rage I had to put the book down for a little bit. And so apparently there were imposters that took over the clan leaders and like started banishing people. So, Crowfeather was one of them. 
And then there was the whole side story where Leopold realizes she's pregnant with these kids, and she's the one who's like, no, we can't be together. It, it can't be. And it's like, okay, uh, is that supposed to make me feel better about this whole thing? Is that supposed to make it okay? Like, you spend an entire series teaching how being together stronger is better, try to disagree with your own theory in the Badger plot line, and then try to reinstate that it's better by having the kids be lied to about who their parents are. And when the truth comes out, uh, one of them goes on a murder spree and attempts suicide. Like, I don't know about you, but I feel like a lot of the problems could have been avoided if they were just like, hey, let's stop having clans and just get along. Because at this point, I, it's more just like to keep making books. It's not really to tell a story anymore. Like, we gotta keep the series going, we gotta throw in unnecessary drama and conflict, so let's make it worse. <laughs> the only good character is Jay Feather. I love this picture of him, because like, the entire series, he was the one character who was consistent. He, his whole personality didn't change, he didn't become unlikable, he didn't become, like, he was just a good character. And I'm surprised he's still this good of a character, from where I left off and what I read about him. Like, he was not the nicest, but he was consistent. He did his job well, and he loved the people around him. Yeah. He also holds grudges, which I agree with, because, like, you don't forgive uh, attempted murderers. Like, there are a lot of things you forgive. There are some things you can understand. Uh, attempted murder is not on that list. And never will be. So, like, that's another thing I'm kind of upset about. Because, like, he's your son, you have to forgive him. He's from your clan, it's like, he tried to kill someone. Like, that's not something you can redeem. So. And another thing. He's the rudest of the siblings, and he is the most reasonable. And... I didn't go through and count, but I'm almost certain that if you were to go back through the series and just, like, count how many people were saved uh, because of, you know, these characters, I feel like Jay Feather would be close to the top. Because just him being logical and not jumping into situations headfirst makes him better, okay? <sighs> like, he forgave Leafpool. Like, again, you do not forgive attempted murderers. You do forgive liars when they have a good reason to lie. He forgave his mother. He was still mad at her. He did not view her as a mother, but he forgave her and he did care for her. And I also found out he makes a graveyard for cats. So, like, I'm surprised that was never done before, but it's a sweet gesture. And then Leaf Pool was done dirty. Like, I don't understand what to say. Her entire life was spent caring for other people. Like, for the majority of the series, she was a shadow to her sister. Like, she was a second thought. And then when somebody finally looked at her first, someone thought about her first instead of her sister, um, it was somebody who she wasn't supposed to fall in love with. Again, because she was a medicine cat and she can't fall in love, which makes no fucking sense. And she dies in a cave. She dies in a cave. And I did some research, I'm like, okay, it says she dies, but what does everybody react about this? Like, how do all the other characters respond? And it's like, Jay Feather was like, you didn't let me finish. Like, apparently he was in the middle of a conversation, and he was talking about how he didn't love her as a mother, and he's like, let me finish. I never loved her as a mother, but I loved her as someone in my clan, and I cared for her. And then I was curious about how Crowfeather reacted, because, like, this is his second wife. Like, kind of, I... I don't know if you would count the first one his wife, but I'm gonna count it that way. So his second wife dies, and apparently it was, like, a singular sentence or two. And it's, like, him just, like, staring off and being shocked. And then it was squirrel flight. Squirrel flight. Squirrel flight saying it. And she was like, did he love her this whole time? That's so sad. And I'm like, yeah, it is sad. Like... <laughs> And then Jake. <laughs> so I did some quick research and I found out that almost every single problem in the Warrior Cat series would have been solved if the owners of Jake had neutered him. Like, like literally. Scourge never would have been born, so he never would have like taken over the city. 
uh, Firestar wouldn't have been born. Like, some people could argue, oh, that's not so bad, that's not so bad. Like, you know, Firestar saved the forest. It's like, a lot of the issues in the forest wouldn't have started because, um, Jake was meddling. Because he also apparently became mates with someone from Wind Clan, and there was a whole revenge story that he joined them on. Like, that wouldn't have happened if... Well, no, that part still would have happened, but still. If he had been neutered, he wouldn't be, like, so driven to explore. And it would have saved so much drama. Like, this story wouldn't exist without Jake. <sighs> I gotta finish reading this and get back to you.